Chapter four, exercise. One fine morning in the month of May, when Stuart was three years old, he arose early, as was his custom, washed and dressed himself, took his hat and cane, and went downstairs into the living room to see what was doing. Nobody was around but Snowbell, the white cat belonging to Mrs. Little. Snowbell was another early riser, and this morning he was lying on the rug in the middle of the room, thinking about the days when he was just a kitten. Good morning, said Stuart. Hello, replied Snowbell sharply. You're up early, aren't you? Stuart looked at his watch. Yes, he said. It's only five minutes past six, but I felt good and I thought I'd come down and get a little exercise. I should think you'd get all the exercise you want up there in the bathroom, banging around, waking all the rest of us trying to get the water started so that you can brush your teeth. Your teeth really aren't even big enough to brush anyway. Want to see a good set? Look at mine. Snowbell opened his mouth and showed two rows of gleaming white teeth, sharp as needles. Very nice, said Stuart, but mine are all right, too, even if they're small. As for exercise, I take all I can get. I bet my stomach muscles are firmer than yours. I bet they're not, said the cat. I bet they are, said Stuart. They're like iron bands. I bet they're not, said the cat. Stuart glanced around the room to see what he could do to prove to Snowbell what good stomach muscles he had. He spied the drawing window shade on the east window with its shade cord and ring like a trapeze, and it gave him an idea. Climbing to the windowsill, he took off his hat and laid down his cane. You can't do this, he said to the cat, as he ran and jumped onto the ring the way acrobats do in the circus, meaning to pull himself up. A surprising thing happened. Stuart had taken such a hard jump that it started the shade. With a loud snap, the shade flew up clear to the top of the window, dragging Stuart along with it and rolling him up inside so that he couldn't budge. Holy mackerel, said Snowbell, who was almost as surprised as Stuart Little. I guess that'll teach him to show off his muscles. Help, let me out, said Stuart, who was frightened and bruised inside the rolled up shade. And who could hardly breathe? But his voice was so weak that nobody heard. Snowbell just chuckled. He was not fond of Stuart and didn't bother him. And it didn't bother him at all that Stuart was wrapped up in the window shade, crying and hurt and unable to get out. Instead of running upstairs to tell Mr. and Mrs. Little about the accident, Snowbell did a very curious thing. He glanced around to see if anybody was looking, and then he leapt softly to the windowsill, picked up Stuart's hat and cane in his mouth, carried them to the pantry, and laid them down at the entrance of the mouse hole. When Mrs. Little came down later and found them there, she gave a shrill scream, which brought everybody on the run. It's happened, she cried. What has, asked her husband. Stuart's down the mouse hole.